Hey everybody, welcome back. These are some TikTok dates that make your worst date look amazing. I will never complain again. Okay, so it was back in 2016. It was me and my best friend and our other friend, EJ. We all went to the movies and it was with these three friends. They were all from the Air Force, y'all. We've been talking to these boys. We met them at the club a couple of weeks ago. So we've already hung out with them before, but this was like our first actual like date, right? Now my dude was already a little, he was a little bit weird, but I just like let it go because he was really cute. Like he was, he was fun. He was fun. So we get to the movies. We're all sitting by our dates or whatever, and I am in between my friend's date, it's me, and then it's my date. When the movie starts, when the movie starts, everything is cool, or whatever, right? This nigga passes me like popcorn or whatever, but then he grabs my hand. This ah! starts fingering my hand. What did you just say? Wait, 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 no, wait, no, really? Oh God, oh God. How does one do that to a hand? Hey, don't judge. I have something in my head, a visual representation of what I think it is. But then again, I am still confused. I'm gonna need a part two. No, you heard me right. He started fingering my hand. It took everything in my power not to do this. So we're just sitting there and I'm just looking around seeing if anybody else see this going on. People who are curious of what he was doing. My hand was like this and he was like. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there just like. And I just know that in his head right now, he just know he being sexy. So I'm looking at the movie, not even paying attention to the goddamn movie. And finally the movie is over and we're all going back to the car. Everyone's saying goodbye to their dudes. Mine is being all lovey-dovey on me. And at this point, I just wanted to go home. <laughs> Boys drive off or whatever, we all get in the car. And I'm all like, Bitch. It's like, what? <laughs> my hand lost its virginity tonight. Long story short, I told him what happened. And my friend EJ said, you, that happened to you? You would never guess what happened to me. I said, no. girl, what? She said, Wait. girl, my date was biting on my damn hair, just chewing on it. <laughs> Oh, please. Lord have mercy. Jesus, take the wheel. Fighting your hair. <laughs> How are people so bad at life? Okay, well, you're saying that they were in the military, right? Like, maybe they genuinely just don't know. You're a goddamn genius. See, this to me is a clear sign that they've never had a girlfriend before. You can always tell when they've never dated before because they're really bad kissers usually and bad at other things as well. And they've never had a girlfriend that's been like, no babe, not like that, like this, like this. Someone has to tell them that that's not how you do it. Why don't you ask your sister? All right, let's hear from some men, okay? I want to hear from the mans. I had a first date tonight, and it, it, it was great. <laughs> it, it was great. It, it, went, it, it, it went really well. It went really well. I matched with a girl on Bumble, and I know what you might be thinking. Zogun, I thought you said bye-bye, ta-ta Bumble. <laughs> but I just went for it, you know? A little late-night rendezvous, a little date night. So I just, I just went back on Bumble for just a little bit. So I match with this girl, and she's cute. She's outdoorsy. She has pets. She's very family-oriented. I'm like, great. I ain't gonna take her on a date. We meet up at a bar, and uh, it's 8 o'clock, and 10 minutes pass, and she's like, oh, I'm looking for parking. And I'm like, okay, great, cool. Let me know when you're here. I can wait outside if you need to, just to, you know, make sure that you know I'm real, you're real. What is real? And so it's 8, 8, 10, 8, 20, oh, 8, no. 30, oh, no. 8, 40. No, babe, no. And I said, are you coming, <laughs> lady? Where are you? She then walks in <laughs> at 8, 40. Five. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, I'm so, so sorry. I'm late. Parking was crazy. Traffic was crazy. It's always about the f***ing traffic, because, isn't it? Listen, it's always about the traffic because you can't be mad at them for being late if it's traffic. No more traffic. That's everybody's favorite excuse. Oh, traffic, traffic, traffic was so bad. Traffic. It was the traffic. That way you can't get mad at them because it was circumstances that are beyond your control. So I swept it under the rug, and as we sat down, I started asking her questions and getting to know her. I always ask questions that make you think a little bit, that are not so like cliche dating, like what is your favorite color, daddy? Like, <laughs> how likely are you to yell at me in public? Or 
Tell me your favorite natural disaster, or tell me a reason why I should not date you. Every Ooh. single question I asked her, she would always reply with, Oh, how about you? By the end of the night, my shoulders and my back have turned into a double black diamond ski slope from the amount of carrying I was doing in this conversation. Damn. So then I asked her, do you have any spontaneous questions for me? Like, I'm an open book. I can answer quite literally any question. And then she said, I'm sorry if this is too off guard. What's an ethnicity that you would not date? What? I said, I figure you have an answer for this, so I'm just gonna have you answer this. And she said, hmm, I think I would say Indians. <laughs> and I said, it was great meeting you. Have a good night. I'm out of here. Bye bye. Ta da. Why would she say that? Why would you ever ask that? That is a loaded question. You're very clearly sitting with a guy that's ethnic. Like you're very clearly sitting with him. You dodged a bullet, my darling. Maybe you were not interesting to her. I think he's quite funny, to be honest. Like it could be one of those things where he's a lot different than his like online persona, but I found him delightful. And I also like the fact that he's asking like spontaneous questions. I think it works when someone matches your energy though. Like a lot of people are just like very low effort when it comes to online dating. That's why it sucks. Cause it's just low effort. Everybody's seeing multiple people at once. Nobody cares enough to try. But I appreciate that he goes the extra mile and wants to actually listen to her when she talks. You'd be surprised. Or maybe you won't be surprised. Maybe you won't be. Cause like, it seems like not listening when, <laughs> when people talk is normal or quite common, I should say. Um, what, what were you saying? I matched with this guy on Hinge. He was a Lebanese guy. I'm also Lebanese and I can tell you that all of the worst dates I have ever been on in my life have been with Lebanese men and it started with this guy. We chatted for a bit in the app. I don't remember what we talked about. I mean, this was like three or four years ago at this point, but it must have been nice because I agreed to go out to dinner with him and he's the one who asked me out. We went to one of my favorite restaurants. It's like this low key Italian spot near me. I go up to him and say hi. And from the moment I start talking to him, it's like he's mad at me. Like I'm like, hi, and he's like, hi. And that was literally his vibe the whole night. The vibe was basically like we were a couple that's been dating for like three or four years and we were having a fight. All of his responses are like one word answers. He's not making any effort to have conversation with me. It's it's just like he doesn't care to be- Okay, girl, I'm telling you right now, it's because he um, is probably dating somebody else and maybe he's just not into you. I know it sucks. I've been on the receiving end of that too. What? Luckily, the service was super fast. We get the check in under an hour. He goes, oh, do you want to go out to a bar and like grab a drink after this? I was like, is this guy crazy? Like, does this guy just think that this is a good date? I was like, no. I was like, I, I want to go home. Like, I'm tired. Like, I, I couldn't believe that he thought he could ask me out for a drink after that. And he was like, really? Like, you want to go home? It's only 8 p.m. I was like, yeah, I'm tired and I want to go home. He insists on walking me to my car. I get in the car. I barely hug him goodbye. I mean, I was so pissed at this point. I get home. I've been out of the house for less than an hour and a half. As soon as I get home, he sends me a message on WhatsApp that's like, oh, is it really bad that I wanted to kiss you when I walked you to the car? Wait. I responded. I said, did you think that went well? He <laughs> acted all confused. I explained to him how he was behaving. He sends me a message this long talking about like, oh, I'm so sorry. I got a message from my boss. He wants a meeting tomorrow. And like, I really think that I'm going to get fired. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry you're going through that. But if you're incapable of setting that aside and being polite and pleasant on a first date with a woman, you then you should stay home. Like if you're incapable of doing that, you need to stay home. You should have rescheduled the date. And then he starts dumping all of his professional baggage on me talking about work. And I'm like, this is just not okay. I don't know you. I'm not your girlfriend. Well, Eventually period. I end the conversation. The next day I get a message unprompted from him that just says I got fired. I did not respond. At the end of the day, I had gone on Instagram to make sure I had unfollowed him and he blocked me, so. Okay, all right. Well, that took a turn that I was not expecting. I was not correct about that. He was 
just being a dickhead. He wanted to secure the bag, but without putting in much effort. I've had similar dates. The guy barely speaks the whole time and then asks me out on a second date. Like, why do you want to put us through that again? Like, I firmly believe this, okay? If he's not putting in an effort to get to know you, he doesn't actually like you. But he's also willing to go home with you. What a douche. Just because he asks you out on a second date does not mean that he likes you. It means that maybe you didn't give it up on the first date. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't mean to be blunt, but I... <laughs> This is just many years of dating app experience. One time when I was 17, I went out with this guy. I picked him up because he couldn't drive for some reason. Not a big deal, whatever. And then about three minutes into the date, we didn't even leave the neighborhood. A car pulls in front of me and stops. It was his buddy. They were working together and they were going to rob me and assault me. Stop. Unfortunately for them, they did not know that I was insane. He told me to do what he said and I wouldn't get hurt and to open the door for his buddy. Instead, I took off, may or may not have ran over his buddy's foot, pulled out a can of pink glittery pepper spray, drained him in the face in my car. Oh, girl! All while screaming, I'm gonna kill him and then I'm gonna come back and kill his buddy. And then he had the audacity to call me crazy. Me. I basically told him I was going to crash the car and kill us both. And then he finally asked very politely if I would let him out of the car and I obliged. Wow, girly, I wanna be you when I grow up. Is it at that point where we need to be bringing pepper spray on dates? Is that where, where we're at right now? Cause I feel like it saved her in this situation. Unfortunately for them, they did not know I was insane. <laughs> <laughs> you put up a fight, girl. I love to see it. This is the definition of fuck around and find out. Adds glittery pepper spray to basket. <laughs> Just to like add a little sprinkle sprinkle, you know, to, to a situation because nobody wants to use glittery pepper spray. But at least when there's glitter, it's pretty. It does exist. Champagne gold glitter pepper spray keychain for women. It's so pretty. This pepper spray is yassified. Something about it, you know, like I never thought about getting pepper spray until now, but I might just because it exists with glitter inside it. Does it come in black? Now my one extroverted moment a year led me here because when I was in the bank and I saw the cute bank teller, I was like, well, I should just ask him out. And so I did. I suggested we go um, a little ways out of town so that we weren't the center of the town uh -oh. gossip. And so my date, we'll call him John, agrees and we go on this date. Of course, I'm extremely anxious due to the uh, social anxiety, but as I'm finally starting to get over the nerves and settle into the fact that this is actually happening, I'm starting to feel okay and it, it takes a turn. We had ordered our drinks and I was about to ask him what he was gonna order tea and I go to set my menu down and I spill his beer all over his lap. I'm embarrassed oh. and extremely apologetic. He's soaking wet and it's a catastrophe. He gets all cleaned up and I'm so flustered that I can't even carry on a conversation. So I just excuse myself and I'm like, I'm gonna run to the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom, I text my friend. She gives me a virtual little text pep talk. Just because it started bad doesn't mean it has to end bad, right? As I walk up to him, he's on the phone. I overhear him saying, this is the worst day ever. She's so boring. She has zero personality. I wouldn't even hook up with her. I mean, yeah, she's pretty-ish, but she's just extremely extremely awkward. I swallow my pride and I take a seat and I let the abnormal date go on as normal as it possibly can. Now, I know the date's over, but he's like, so what are you gonna get to eat? I'm like, a brownie because I'm not gonna leave here without dessert. Period. Because after this, I deserve it. Yes, and queen. he gives me the weirdest look and sure enough, right on cue, his phone rings. He's like, hello? Oh my gosh, Wh what? What? I gotta take this and he steps out. <laughs> Acting. And so I wave over the waitress for the check. And as I do that, I see my friend's coworker walk in and he is so attractive. I met him briefly once, oh, but I'm positive he has okay. no idea. Okay, I like where this is going. Until I'm going to pull out my money and I hear, what are you doing here? And I look up and it's the coworker. We'll call him Will. And I look at him and I'm like, I could ask you the same thing. He explains that he's on a date and I'm like, I'm on a date as well. And that's right when John walks up. And I was like, but I'm pretty sure John was just leaving because, um, his friend got a flat tire, his grandma's in the hospital. One of the two. John goes, uh, yeah, the, the a friend one. So the waitress walks up with our check and John heads out. And I go home and I call my best friend immediately. I told her I'm swearing off dating. And she was like, no, 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 you just need a little bit of practice. She goes, what if you practiced with Will? And I agreed to it. Let's go on a practice date with Will. <laughs> Although if it goes very badly, it's also awkward because, you know, he's kind of like within the circle. But you cute as hell, girl. Someone will appreciate your awkwardness, okay? Some people like that. Mike likes it. Or do I? Buckle up. So he was in Vancouver, a match with this guy. He's absolutely gorgeous. He's got some, um, like everyone in Vancouver, he's an actor. So he's got like really nice headshots and he's got chiseled jaw, blonde hair. 
tall, beautiful guy. And we're just, we're super, super hitting it off in the messages, like very bantery. He was really witty, very smart. He wrote screenplays and I'm a writer. So I was like, oh my God. My cardinal rule is that before a date, I call someone on the phone just to like make myself more comfortable, make sure we actually kind of have a connection in real time and off the apps. And so I called him the day before and I'm like, hey, what's up? What are you thinking for tomorrow? Should I come to you? You come to me? What do we want to do? Um, and he was like, why don't you come down to my neighborhood? We'll go have a thing. I'm like, sweet. So all seemed well and good banter on the phone, like rad guy. So I drive down there and I'm like standing on a street corner being like, hey, I'm like in the area. I don't see you. I'm like looking around and he's like, I'm across. I see you. And he's like, and I look and I'm like, oh no, um, what? And so he's obviously the same dude. He looks the same, but his demeanor, he's like probably six foot two, but he's hunched to like a five foot seven. And he's just like really um, like skittish and nervous and uh, not at all what he seemed like on the phone. Fair enough. He might've just been really nervous, but he just, he, he looked completely different the way he carried himself. He was dressed very strange. Everything was weird. And so I was kind of like, okay, uh, immediately not very attracted to you, but whatever, I can make a new friend on this date. So we go, I assumed he would pick the place because I came to him in his neighborhood. I wasn't familiar. And we go to like three different restaurants and all of them are like, we don't have space. It's Friday night at 7 p.m. And he was very like, duh, and like didn't know how to engage with any of the servers and everything like threw him off further and further. And his energy got like more and more high strung. Whoa. And it was so odd. And we end up at this bar that's like, presumably pirate themed because there was parrots everywhere very weird and i was like whatever i'll have a bunch of drinks and fuck this strange man <laughs> turns out he writes medieval literature not okay. quite up my alley so we actually had like almost nothing in common and i was like i'm not gonna lie like you look a little different uh because your demeanor isn't really what i expected um and he was like what do you mean and i was like oh you just seem like a little nervous and fidgety and i didn't expect that from the phone and your pictures and he was like i'm doing a bit I was like, what? what? And he's like, I'm doing a bit. And I was like, you're not going to try out a bit of awkward, weird guy on a Wait, first what? date. Anyway, it was the weirdest thing ever. I got in a cab and ran straight into the arms of my ex-boyfriend. Who does a bit on a first date? Who does a bit at all on a date? That is not where I thought this was going. I thought it was just kind of like a case of like, oh yeah, you make sure you meet them in person because you you can't just be attracted to someone who you're texting. You gotta meet them in person, ladies. Always, At the very least a phone call or FaceTime. But this sounds like an excuse. I don't, <laughs> I'm sorry. This guy just sounds super awkward and weird and uh, he said that as an excuse. Oh, I'm not actually like that, I'm acting. I'm acting and scene. Bravo, bravo. This guy 